Yeah, it's going down, man. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a very special guest today. When we talk about um, we talk about the screw thing, man, this SUC, man, this H Town history, man, and especially when we talking about DJ Screw, you know, we got to start with a few people, man. And today's guest is one of those ones, man. Al D, what's going on, man? What's up, Donnie? What's up, man? Uh, it's good to be at the show, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Thank you, man, for having me today. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready. It's whatever. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I appreciate you coming through, man. What uh? So what's what's new? What's going down? What you got new? Man, right now, uh, I just opened up my uh, my my shop. It's the Screwed Up Click Shop, and I got the South Side Lines Den. You know what I'm saying? What that is? 71, what is it, 7107 Belfort or 7102? 7102 Belfort and Glenlock. I ain't open to the public yet, you know, because of the corona thing. Hit us, man, you know what I'm saying? But my shop been open for... Like like six seven months already, but the Corona thing here, so I ain't open to the public yet. I got the studio up and running, and I got the store. You know, I'm getting the store together or whatever. So I probably about another month. I'm gonna go ahead and open up. I guess everybody just gonna have to wear their masks coming through the door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm gonna go and open up to the public, man. You know, uh, shout out to uh, Greg Zamora. You know what I'm saying? That's my business partner, Soldier United for the Cash. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Are you gonna have what you gonna have in there? Like the teas and uh, the merch? Uh, tea, I'm gonna have all the merch. You know what I'm saying? All the screw product, my product, all my shirts coming out. Soldiers United for the cash. You know what I'm saying? And screws things and that screw CDs plus all my music, music and uh, you know just everybody. I Man, I want everybody's music in that. You know, local local artists here in Houston. I want their music inside the store, man. It ain't gonna just be no screw CDs and screw tapes inside there. It's gonna be everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking out for everybody. I want all the old school stuff back in there. I want my street military. I, 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 I want, you know, all my SPC inside of there. I want all my screwed up click. I want all my shows, you know, all my, my I got second generation now. You know, second generation, I, start, I started that. Okay, you know? tell me about that because I've been seeing the second generation that you um, uh Manny B had started it. You know what I'm saying? And he had a lot of people in Austin and stuff like that because he was staying out there and he was bringing all the brothers together. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then when I came in, I just took it to a to a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? I brought all the Latino artists in, Native American, you know what I'm saying? Um, African American, uh, uh, you know, European. We got everything, man. We got everything. I, I got a, another chapter in Mexico right mm -hmm. now. You know what I'm saying? I, I got people all over the all over the world. You know, second generation. We big, man. We are probably like we over 300 members right now. Hmm. That's you strong. Know, That's strong. We strong. You know what I'm saying? We got every, every you know, every race you know in, in it. You know what I'm saying? We just we just strong. A lot of people didn't like that at first, but you know me, Don. I don't give a damn what they like. Yeah. You know, I really don't. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I was already changing things when Screw was still here. I was so united for the cash. A lot of people try to take that name and run, run with you. Can't run with what's mine. You know what I'm saying? I got everything on paperwork too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, tell me about that with the Souls United for the Cash. Um, what, did, it's just, it, 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 it's just, you know, I told Screw before he passed. You know what I'm saying? I say Screw man, you know, because I had a Ross Foreign brother just tell me you got to watch. You gotta watch your name. You gotta watch which what you're named in this world. You gotta watch what you name your businesses. You gotta watch, really watch everything. I mean, if you name your, your business Crash Money Records, I mean, somebody gonna crash. I mean, mm. I mean, it's, it's Soldiers United for the Cash. We all soldiers. We united, and we're about our money, man. You know what I'm saying? Screwed up click that we started like that, but it was like, man, everything was kind of screwed up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Then we start straightening out everything. You know. When I told Screw that, he looked at me, he said, what did you just say? I said, Soldiers United for the Cash. Screw, Screw just looked at me, he said, God damn it, Al. And he ran, you know, Screw was running, Screw was running with it because, you know that little freestyle we did at his house? Mm -hmm. Screw mentioned Soldiers United for the Cash on that, uh, on, on, that, on that little documentary that we did inside of that, that, that film. If nobody was paying attention to that. They wasn't paying attention to that. They didn't know because Screw had already gave me permission. He said, Al, man, you know, I'm kind of focused on doing my mixtapes and doing this and that. He said, man, Al, I want you to start running and doing stuff for the for the record company. Screw was going to put that that, that record company. Screw was going to come hard, you know what I'm saying? And, and he said, man, I want you to kind of like go out and, and take care of your business. So first thing I did, man, was I went out, man, and that's how I got zero. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had went to Zero concert and he just was on stage and he was doing a song and he mentioned my name. I'm like, wait a minute, what did he just say? And on that song he said, like LD said, you show show love, you show love and you, you get love back. I'm only showing love to the ones that show me love. Fuck friends. And I was like, wait a minute. And he was already going off. I was already digging it. But when he said that, it kind of, it kind of touched me, man. I'm talking about like it touched me. Like no matter where I got in the game or how high up I got, it don't matter. It don't matter to me t today. I'm always be that humble cat. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. It's just me. You know what I'm saying? I never got the big head. None of that. And and I'm looking at Zero. I'm watching his style where he was spitting. I said, man, this dude cold. He was rolling on stage and shit, performing. He was just natural with it. He was just live. Man, I cut it for it. So when he got, when when he was performing, so I guess somebody told him something. He got up. He started performing again. He looked and he turned and he looked again. He said, wait up. Because like he said in the documentary, he was one of the biggest LD fans out there hmm. at the time. And um, he looked at me. He saw me, and I looked at him. And <laughs> after he did the show, we was in the bathroom. And I, man, we was in there. I said, man, you jamming. I just started going off. I started just, just telling him, man, you the shit, man. You know, I was just going off. And and I started hitting the walls and shit in the bathroom. Zero was like, what the fuck wrong with this nigga? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking at Zero. I said, man, you screwed up click. He said, what? I said, you screwed up click. He said, what the fuck you mean? How the fuck you figure? I said, man, you screwed up click, man. I'm going to holler at you, man, in a few days. So I went back to, to, to and told Screw. I told Screw, say, man, man, this nigga jamming like a motherfucker, man. This man, I just started going out. Screw just looking at me like, God damn, and it's coming from Al? Hmm. Man, what the fuck? I said, man, Screw, I told man, straight up, man. I told him, man, he screwed up click. Screw looked at me. He said, Hey, you feel like that? That nigga that cold? I say, man, look, got that boy a CD, gave it to Screw. Man, Screw was sitting down, listen, Screw say, motherfucker. I went back and told Ro, and Ro came, came over, got with Screw, and Screw told him. You know what I'm saying? Straight mm. up, man. That's what it. That's this is what it is. So you been on the recruiting, then, so, man. I've been, yeah. I've been, I've we'll been, do. I've been. Oh, let me tell you too, Danny. That was Club Unique because you asked me right, that right, before. Right, right. Yeah, that was Club Unique and then it was Club 360, whatever. See, I was running the club because I had I was throwing talent shows there and I had people coming. If you win the freestyle contest, you get $350. Hmm. Yeah. Uh flip. Didn't wasn't out there on no freestyle tapes. You know, he wasn't nowhere, you know, doing anything. He came and he was eating motherfuckers ass alive hmm. on freestyles up there. Man, he was telling them new assholes and he got that. Man, he broke my ass like he got that money. So this is before the. So this man, is, this is okay, before because everything. Flips, because Flips talks about him battle rapping and doing this and that. Yes, and so this, yes, this is one of the battles. This that, is this is one of the places. This is where he started. Hmm. He started with me, and he used to come and win, and we'd be outside and shit just chilling, and he'll be in a zone. He'll be sitting down on a curve, and I look over, you know. It's like you could feel somebody looking at you sometime. I just look, and he had the curve. He just like this. He's like, hmm. he in a daze, and he's looking like I can't believe it. You know, it's LD, and he he winning these freestyle contests. He getting the money, bro. He was getting paid. He was winning, man. That's how Flip. I answered to Flip the screw. Okay, all right. Okay, I don't. I don't want to get to it here. Let's 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 go because we gonna we gonna. I didn't get back to that. it. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I didn't. Okay. I didn't even know that. Damn. Yes, sir. Okay, so because here's the thing, man, and you know this is what I want to do. Like we got, I don't know how much time you got, but I got time. I got time. You know I mean? I, I'm gonna I, be here with you. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we that we get it right because if for whatever reason I've never Take been able time, to find. Take your time, Donnie. Ask me what you want to ask me. Yeah, yeah. I just ain't been able to find out the, the proper LD interview, man. So we are gonna do that right now, man. And you this know? is my first one, so I'm happy. That's why I bought that bottle today and everything. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate I'm happy. that. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, having yeah, me. Like nah. I said, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Ask me what you want to so, ask me. So, I'm okay. Here, Starting out, man. Growing up, uh, was it in Quail Meadows? Okay. Um, it started in Quail Meadows. See what had happened was. I was at Milby High School, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, we left Milby. Uh, I moved to, 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 to the south side. My mom had to move to the south side off Loose Street, you know what I'm saying? Then I had to start going to Sterling. That was the first black school I've ever been to. Yeah, the first time I ever seen so many black people in my life. So you went to Milby? Were you going to what, Hispanic schools before Yes, then? sir. Yeah. I was at J.R. Harris, uh, Harris Elementary, D.D. Middle School, and Milby High. And the way that we grew up, it was all Hispanic in the neighborhood. I mean, in 83rd and London and, 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 and all in there, Smith, Smith Edition, 
we grew up, the neighborhood is black, but where we grew up at is all Manchester, Magnolia, Second Ward, all that. I grew up with nothing but but Hispanic people, like all my aunts and, and, and my cousins and everything is mixed. You met one of them, Mijo, when he was here. Mm -hmm. um, it was different because, I mean, I grew up around, back then, with Pachuco, Low Riders, everybody, man, it was different, man. When I went to, when I went to Sterling, man, I was I went in there flannel dickies and shit, you know what I'm saying? Stacy out and they like, nigga, where you from? Where you from? California? You dressed like how you used to see it. Man, you know? I was tripping, man. I was like, damn, man. But anyway, it started right there. It was Coach Bull's class that me and Screw was in at Sterling High. And uh that's where me and Screw clicked up at. I used to draw pictures and shit, man, and Screw used to laugh like a motherfucker. I used to get him in trouble in class and I would get in trouble because I was writing Drawing pictures of my my my, my kinfolk Johnny Hill getting in trouble in class and shit. We had uh, free lunch cards back then. Like I say, I always tell this, you know, Screw had three pair of pants. That whole year at Sterling, he had one pair of Adidas Stan Smiths until his feet came out the front of him. We rode the yellow bus home together. I would go to Quail Meadows. Screw taught me how to uh, rap on beat, and he taught me how to write 16s. I so even, so at this time, where's Screw as far as in his DJing? Uh, Screw, Screw had one. He had a mixer that only worked on one side. He had one turntable and one speaker that was fucked up. Um, and we had got our first mic was cheap ass mic. Is he DJ had, Chill and all this around at this time? This is when him and DJ Chill like Shannon. Turned Chill up. started coming around and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chill started coming around. Cause Chill been in the picture a long time. Chill Daddy was a damn, uh, he, he ran all the horses and stuff. Chill started DJing. Big Bud was DJing at the time. Screw was DJing. And what had happened, Donnie, is uh, Screw's first pair of 1200 techniques came from my brother Marvin Jerome Driver. RIP to him now. He, 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 he just got killed a couple of months ago. Oh, man. And uh, the story is this, man. My brother was an auto... You know, they was in the auto theft and stuff like that. They were still in turn uh, T tops and Grand Elms back then, and you know, you know Ricky Ricardo seats and all that. And uh, so he asked Screw, "Man, what do you need?" Screw said, "Man, I want them techniques." So my brother went out stealing T tops and tires and all that stuff. He got the money and he went and got those turntables out the pawn shop for Screw. Screw needed needles, so he got those needles for Screw for for his turntables. I stole all my mom's equipment out of her house. I started stealing mixers, uh, tape decks. I stole the speakers and everything. My mom was like, where's my goddamn equipment at? My, my turntable. And I was like, mom, I, I kind of needed it. She didn't know I was rapping and shit, and she found out. So, and then she was like, where's all my motherfucking food going and shit? I started taking food out of the house, feeding screw and stuff like that. So, cause, cause, and he was not selling any tapes at all. And then when he started selling tapes, you know what I'm saying? It was only like three tapes a week, and all the boys in Quail Meadows was buying the tapes uh, then Pop Pop, uh, Brock, uh, 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 Pr Prince Toe, Toe, everybody in 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 uh, Quail Meadow started buying and these it. regular speed tapes. Uh, regular, 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 regular speed. Why y'all in high school? Yes, while we in high school, everything was regular. Screws. Uh, uh, DJ that Screw looked it up to was who? Jazzy Jeff. Jazzy Jeff. That's what I told yeah, you last time. Mm -hmm. Jazzy Jeff. Screw uh, went from the two turntables. We got more turntables. Screw was scratching with his lips, his elbows, doing 360s, coming up with his knees and everything. Everything was fast. Screw was not a DJ. That DJ slow music. Screw was a bad m motherfucker. Screw was cold, man. Screw was cold. Uh, man, I remember uh, th th that uh, me and Joe, what, what, was the, what, what, was that, what was that song, Raw Bass? Uh, 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 it was it was raw bass and and all them uh in that dun, 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 he said screw you say I want to rock right I I I I I want to hmm. rock right and on four turns I I I I said man he's a chin turn around three sixty up under the legs and this and that it was nothing slow about screw hmm. it was nothing slow about screw as a matter of fact I like the slow stuff and everything but I like screw just going the fuck off on them turntables, bro. Our first show was at Queen of Peace Hall. Um, y'all doing shows while y'all in high school? I, I don't, this is high school and I don't want to jump and, and start talking because I want to answer all the questions you got. Ronnie Spencer is the one who taught Screw how to DJ. Screw's first job was at the skating ring. What's the name of that skating ring? Rainbow. Rainbow. 
Screw started his first job right there. Ronnie got him the job. All those uh, uh, tapes and uh, all those old records and all that stuff came from Ronnie. Mm. Ronnie taught Screw every all, all that stuff. Screw, <coughs> Screw started working at up. <coughs> Rices, bagging groceries. <coughs> He was at, working there. And, but he, at this, this is the time he's just staying <laughs> with his dad. It's just him and his you know, dad. No, he was and, staying with Pops. Yeah, okay. upstairs. Yeah, he was staying with Pops. And stuff started getting out of hand and stuff. And Pops was uh, driving trucks. He used to leave chicken for Screw there. You know, he had to go to work. So he would leave and he'd be gone for a week. He used to buy a Screw a box of chicken. That's all Screw had. He had that little 12-piece, 10-piece or whatever. You know, For the my, week. For the week. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I mean... When there wasn't no school, you get one piece of chicken in the daytime, one piece of chicken at night. That's why Screw was stuck on chicken like that. And, 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 and you, you know, he was limited on, on, on stuff, man. And that's what made him so humble, and that's what made Screw so great is because um, before he moved out of the apartment and got his own, which was downstairs across the, 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 the little uh, driveway right there, I mean... He came from rags to riches, man. He came from nothing, man. And, you know, it's a lot of things that people don't know about Screw. I mean, I was fast. I, 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 I mean, I played basketball. I was in the sports and everything. I told Screw one day, man, you can't run. I didn't know Screw was a, 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 a track star in Smithville. Man, Screw smoked my ass, man. Man, when I tell you smoked, man, that dude was so fast. When I was still talking shit, man, Screw Man, I'm talking shit. I'm talking about let's race, let's go. He was already half past the damn at the damn bath. He smoked me, man. No shit. Yeah, and that's too dirty, you know, at Sterling High. It all started. K Reno used to be rapping in the hallway. And that's stuff. what I'm saying. It's K Reno over there and like Fat Pat. Uh, K Reno wasn't at the house and stuff like that because K Reno was doing his own no, I'm thing. I'm saying at Sterling, I'm saying. Yeah, Sterling. K, K Reno was at Sterling. It all started right there. Hey man, K Reno used to tear a motherfucker ass up. I'm talking about he used to go from school to school battle rapping, and that's where Screw got that uh that split at on his lip. I heard somebody trying to talk shit. He got it from here, he got it from there. A lot of people talk shit. Now he gone. People just say all kind of shit. Want to be family and all that, man. Ain't nobody. None of these motherfuckers till three in the morning came out. But anyway, we gonna keep it real and keep what you asking me. K Reno. Uh, got in somebody's ass at another school and battle rapping and ate him up so bad. You got to talk about your mama and and and, and oh man, K. Reno disrespect. I heard said, man, K. Reno would disrespect tear your man. ass yeah. up. Yeah. And man, they got so mad they started chasing Screw and K. Reno. Then Screw had to jump over a fence. When he got up at the top, dude grabbed him and stole off on him. You know, you know what I'm saying? We got a guy. He got away and everything, but they got him. And man, it was all about you know SPC because you had dopey. Uh, uh, Dopey, if it wasn't for K Reno and Dopey, it wouldn't be no LD. If it wasn't for Ghetto Boys and 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 and, and all them, it wouldn't be no LD. You See, know, you know what I'm saying? And and that's what that's what they they was the ones that I was looking to then. And then Screw, he always kept me. They say LD, your music different. Like you were telling me, LD, you was always conscious and this and that. Well, the reason is is because. When Screw was doing all this DJing and stuff, the Raw Bass, the, the Slick Rick, the MC Shan, the Molly Maul, the Big Daddy Kane, the Ice T, the MC Light, the 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 um Compton's Most Wanted, the, the all this was mixed in to me. So and plus all the H time rappers at the at, at, at the time. I blended all this together. That's what made me who who I am. Then I started reading and doing a lot of these different things that other rappers was not doing. You know what I'm saying? So, back to your questions, Donnie. Yeah. So at this time though, like, um, y'all y'all making these tapes and everything. Are the tapes that he's making? Are y'all rapping on these tapes at first, or these are just mixes? Uh, that everybody we had a, we had a group called Criminal Alliance. And like I said, our first show was in uh, Quail Meadows. Our first uh, manager was Skipper Lee Frazier. Skipper Lee. Skipper Lee Frazier. Old man, Skipper Lee yeah. Frazier. Yes, sir. Because everybody want to say who they was and where they was and this started here. No, you didn't start a goddamn thing, man. Look here, before these boys even started using a pen or paper and thought they could freestyle and still wearing Fruit of Balloons and shit, like, hey, it was Al D, man. It was Ronald Dugar, man. You know what I'm saying? It was some other cats from Quail Meadow. D. We was already doing this already. We Bub has a, a, a songs that we did from Quail Meadows back then. Hmm. Screw taught me how to uh, rap. My first 16 I wrote and uh, anything that I did, Screw taught me everything. 
Yeah, and you you know they they always talk about like uh, kind of relationship between like Screw and his dad around this time, like with him d- wanting to DJ and like I think his dad's uh, trying to tell him. Pops told Screw one day, he said you need to throw the motherfucking turntables and all that equipment in the fucking trash because you ain't gonna never be no get nowhere with this fucking DJ and shit. You ain't gonna be nobody. You throw that shit away. That shit ain't gonna pay no motherfucking bills and this and that and this and that. And I'm not just talking down. Pops is gone. And everything. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, you, you know, I'm just going to tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who get mad. He told him he wasn't going to be shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Bub was DJing at the time, too. And Bub started working. Bub always had Dr. Pepper. He working different jobs and stuff like that. Bub kept him a job. And Screw told me, he said, man, Bub is the realest one out of my whole family, man. Because Bub would come and get something from me, man. And Bub always come back and he ain't got to, Al. He had nothing good to say about, like, nothing, nothing bad ever to say about Bub. And if you look now today, who's running things, who's running the shop and stuff, Bub is there. So, you know what I'm saying? What Screw said was real. And, uh, you know, even though Pop said that, you know, it's like anybody, you know, you, you got to watch how you talk to your kids while they're growing up because you can tell your kids, hey, you know what, you sorry, just like your motherfucking daddy. You ain't going to be shit. You're going to go to jail. You did this and that. And they don't understand when you're talking to your kids, you watering them. They just like a plant. And you telling them, and and and, and even though that kid don't want to go out and get in trouble, man, you still, you putting this shit in their heads, man. But, man, one thing I, I can say, man, that boy told me, man, one day we was on he said, Al, come here. I said, what's up, Screw? He said, man, get on your knees. I got on my knees. I said, man, what's wrong with this boy? He said, man, pray. Man, we're going to make it, Al. And we started praying, man. I said, you think so, Screw? He said, yeah, Al, we're going to just pray. We started praying, but we want to be who we want to be in our music and everything. And, man, it all, and it all happened. But, you know, even though Pops told Screw that, you know what I'm saying, Screw became one of the biggest DJs inside the world. And then when he started making a name for himself and that three in the morning came and started ringing, now all of a sudden, my son, my son, my son, he's doing great this and that and this and that and this and that and all this shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. After you make it. You feel me? And I like I say, you know, I don't care. Anybody want to get mad, get mad, you know what I'm saying? Because you do whatever you want to do. Whoop my ass if you want to try it, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do, I, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Because, look, all those times a nigga stealing equipment, uh, a brother taking uh, uh, penitentiary chances out there stealing cars and shit, buying turntables, and I'm taking food. I'm walking from Loose Street all the way down past Hobby Airport to Quail Meadows on feet with big-ass pickle jars of gumbo and cornbread and all this shit. No car, no bus. The bus don't run there. The bus don't run down Telephone Road. The Metro bus don't run from Telephone, do it, Toby, to, to Quail Meadows. No, sir, I walked on feet. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be there with my bro. You know what I'm saying? And so that's where that's when the whole Al D, my little brother, that whole thing. That's yeah, that's it, where that's that's where it came in at. And I never forgot where I came from. He never forgot where he came from. And man, he looked at me one day, man, with tears in his eyes because I only seen Screw cry once and once once and no twice the whole time I've been knowing him. And man, he said, man, I love you, man. He said, man, God damn it, Al. He said, man, man, you my brother, man. And he started screaming that on those tapes, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I want to come in and say, oh, screw my brother. Like that was going to make me a greater rapper or make somebody buy my albums. Man, look, 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 look at this, man. Look at this, man. Dude, when these dudes was out here freestyling, I was already on tour. I was the first one to drop an album. I had letters from Africa, man, as a local artist. Dude, they freestyling. I'm on tour with 8-Ball and MJG. So they get to get that shit off their mind. I'm glad I'm here at your show. I'm glad the people know now. Out of Al D's mouth. Fuck what anybody else got to say. You not me. You know what I'm saying? And 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 uh yeah, that's where it's where 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 it started because we kept it real with each other. It wasn't about just music. It was about what we went through in life when there was no lights at the house. And you and my mom could come through and give money, make sure those lights back on. I, I didn't know anything about a mama like i said until three in the morning came out my mama was there though you know what i'm saying helped him get his first car i told him to go get his dba for his music that's how when he got the check from three in the morning and the dba and stuff was allowed to go and get his business off of cuddling she was there for him we didn't know nothing about nobody Till three in the morning came out. So if anybody got anything to say, don't talk shit because you wasn't there from the beginning and you wasn't there 
at the end. We'll talk about the end later, but you know what I'm saying? That wasn't there. It was me and Anjali, Willing, C Note, Shorty Mac, and Chris Cooley. That's who was there. Yeah. That's who was there. Yeah. And Bub. Yeah. That's who was there. Anybody else got anything to say? I didn't know you from the beginning. Didn't care for you to come in the middle. And sure the fuck didn't see you in the end. And ain't seeing you now. Shit. There you go. Yeah. So, man, but, you know, the screw thing starts to form, though. You know, he leaves Quill Meadows mm -hmm. and gets the hot. Well, no, he was already, the screw tapes was already being Yeah, made it was already, it yeah. was already starting. Then he went there, but man, started popping off in Broadway. So, how, and, 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 and this was because Toe and them was, they yeah, riding that's the Yeah, 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 yeah. They were still coming coming around. And and, and, and and I got some people that's going to be coming to your shows that I'm going to put on your shows to tell you the history on all that. Uh, uh, yeah, they started coming in Broadway and stuff like that. Then he moved from there. Got in a little shit, moved from there, and uh, cause you know we was both kicked out of Sterling. I had caught caught a case. That's why I wrote one life to live. I caught my my first dope case. You know what I'm saying? Screw caught his at school. Miss Morrow was the principal the principal then. Wait, wait, so, so got caught with weed inside the locker. I had got busted. You know what I'm saying? The, the jump out boys kicked the door in at Mama House. You know what I'm saying? And hit us three terms in one month. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I on my probation. A part of probation was uh, you must obtain a GED. It was no more high school for me. They kicked my fucking ass off and made me get a GED. So you, so how early do you start hustling and shit? Man, like 16, six, mm. 15, 16. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 15, 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't nothing to glorify and, you know, nothing like that. But, man, that was my life. You know what I'm saying? I ended up in there. And that's why I brought my brother Toby to, to today, too. He ended up being here. You know what I'm saying, and 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 this brother here, and it was a couple of more brothers that was supposed to come. I brought them because when I was acting stupid out there, man, doing dumb ass shit, riding around with fucking assault rifles in the back seat, getting wet up and getting fucked up and shit, I went to him one day and I told him, I said, man, give me such and such and such, and hop in the car with me and this and that. He looked at me, he looked in the back seat, he was like, fuck no, nigga, <laughs> and that's Toby, y'all. He said, yeah. fuck no, nigga. I was like, get in the fucking car, man. I'm finna go get these niggas, man. Fuck no. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm not a studio gangster. I'm here to talk about this. I'm not glorifying yeah, it. Yeah. But just to know, you know, I, I, I live that life, man. I, I was, I, I, I'm not the LD that I am t today. I was a damn fool. What did, what, did, what did that come from, man? Just getting being locked uh, right there. Being locked up and then, man, just, you know, um, it really hit me, man. And when I went to boot camp, and all the all the uh, Grace was in the, uh, locked up in the, uh, in Tascosita. I was right there in boot camp. Grace was next door in the uh, what is that state jail? Wood was locked up in the penitentiary. I was in boot camp. So when I was there, man, I had wrote some lyrics, and the lyrics was talking about some real deep, dangerous shit, and. Uh, one of the drill instructors, all the drill instructors that was at boot camp at the time, I didn't know. They were all from Viter. I was wondering why all the black dudes that was in boot camp was getting their ass whooped by these mm. fucking laws. It was real laws, but all of them was Marines and uh, uh, Navy SEALs. They, 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 they was all real from the military, but these were some racist prejudice motherfuckers. Do you hear me? Man, this motherfucker went in my locker, man, and they went through our shit, going through our letters and shit, and he found my lyrics inside of there. And like I said, Dopey and all of them was, was my idols, and I was just on some blow them hoes up type of shit, too, and I was very militant and everything, but, man, what changed me was when that officer found that letter, I mean, that, them lyrics, he lined up the whole platoon. It was 48 of us in the platoon. He made me get front and center in front of everybody. And he walked up to me. He was five foot something. You ain't supposed to look a drill instructor in the eye either. Yeah, he came up to me. He said, you motherfucker. You're talking shit about you. want to do this to cops or this and that and this and that motherfucker. He said, you fucking nigger. He fucking slapped me. Watch that smoke. He, <coughs> he slapped me. And uh, the whole platoon, he said, he, when he slapped me, he said, if I ever see you in the streets, you're going to be another nigger that my 45 is going to zap. See, the whole thing about his conversation is this. The nigger part, nigger, whatever, fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you, dude. But the thing is, when he say you're going to be another 
He letting you know what time of time he well yeah what he on. Another yeah. you gonna be another nigga. So he didn't did this. He yeah, didn't zap. Yeah. He said my forty five zaps. Okay, man, look, the whole platoon just froze like what the fuck. He, they couldn't believe that he said this, and I'm looking at him in his eyes. You're not supposed to look at a drill instructor in his eyes. I'm looking at him in his eyes. I want to fuck this motherfucker up, but I want to go home. You feel me? If I put my hands on him, I'm going to penitentiary, to jail. They're going to ship me out that bitch, right? So look what happens. Look how God work. After he did that to me or whatever, they wrote me up. They sent me, the company commander was a black, a black, black, black man, right? Man, they wrote me up. And they sent me, sent me to the front office and shit. And when I got there, I'm at attention like a motherfucker. And the, and the, and the fucking company commander, he's looking at me. He said, at ease, clown. I'm at ease. And he talking to me. He say, he looking at the letter. He say, what the fuck is this fucking white boy talking about? He got another white drill instructor there with him. He's like, oh, shit. And the, the, the black company commander, he's like, what the fuck is this white boy talking about? All I see on this motherfucking paper is nigga, 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 nigga. You got something against me, boy? I look like, what the fuck? He say, this motherfucker slapping you in your face, calling you niggas and shit and all this and that, and all you saying is nigga on the paper? Well, what happened was, after that, he told me, he say, Listen, dude, uh, you got three days. You are radio in your platoon now. When I see you at the flag in three days, you better be singing cadence, motherfucker, and I better like him. Oh, my God. I went in that bitch, man, and I wrote the cadence in that motherfucker, man. And we came, when we came out the barracks, them boys, 48 people at one time, feet here, like, shook, pow, shook. Oh, and I'm a odd in the world. I used to be a high roller. They odd in the world. I used to be a club. Now I'm in boot camp marching like a soldier. Now I'm. Bow. And I come in. I say, Till drops falling down my face. They say, Till drop. Bow. I say, I'm gonna miss this hardcore place. Man, look. They heard us coming like like almost a half a mile away to the flag. When we came to that bitch, everybody, all the platoons that was there, all the drill instructors, the parents, it was visitation day, all the parents was on the other side. They heard me come through that bitch, my mother, mama, my mother, mom. I was going crazy, I was going. I say, now boo can't save me. Man, look. The parents was on the other side of the motherfucking fence crying, bro. Mm. And when they, after visitation, the phone rung in the in the fucking boot ca- in, in, in 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 the barracks, and the drill was like, "What? What? What?" And he called me up there online, and he told me, "Man, he said, man, the the, the company commander just called right now. He said, man, that was the most beautiful of this thing that he's ever heard. He wants you to write it down for all the other platoons to be singing that while you gone, and they did for years. And then n- not only that." Um, they, they was talking about the parents died. He said I was one of the most disciplined dudes that came through there. They made me, uh, I wasn't the guy that I was a, a, a squad leader then, you know what I'm saying? And you know what was so crazy? One of the, one of the drill instructors that used to have us at night, he was at the fucking uh, desk and, and he called my name to go up there. They checked your chin, make sure no hair, they check your feet or they giving you letters or whatever. He called my name, but he was on the phone with somebody. And when he called my name, I went up there and he gave it to him. And I turned around and I went back online with my letter or whatever. He said, what? 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 Driver. I had to run back up there. Pop, pop, pop. Sir, the driver in the street, sir. He said, hey, he's driver. I said, yes, sir. He said, do you know, did you go to Jared? I said, yes, sir. And everything started lighting up in my head. I looked at him like, God damn it. He, he said, you know what I'm on the phone with? He gave me the phone. It was his mama. She was my principal at J.R. Harris. Wow. And not only my principal, all my aunties and my uncle's principals too, and she was just crying on the phone. I can't believe you're in there. I can't believe you're in there. She was crying. She said, I want you to make it out of there, okay? And you take care of your business when you get out. I said, yes, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? And man, um, after he hung that phone up, he called me up there and he said, Al, I want to tell you something. He said, man, you're going home and he took care of me while I was there. I can't say everything else he did for me while I was inside there, but he broke a lot of rules for me and shit. But uh, 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 he told me that, that that drill instructor that slapped me in the face, 
they went down on him and all the drill instructors wrote papers on him and everything he told me say man I'm glad we're getting rid of this motherfucker they checked his record he had killed a couple of black people while he was on the, on, 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 on the force and shit yeah and uh when we was getting ready to graduate he was already fired he was on the other side of the fence following when the, us on our graduation mark and shit and so in, in March you know inside of his truck and shit he got fired the, the next couple of days that he did that to me Damn. So my life was changed because I seen what was happening in boot camp. A lot of people can read books. A lot of people can join different things. A lot of people can talk shit. A lot of people that was pro-black leaders back then could talk shit and try to put keys in people's back and have them to go do shit. Well, you know, I wasn't the type of person to try to put keys in people's back. I was whooping their ass when I got out of boot camp. Anytime it was somebody out of line fucking with, fucking with us, when I tell you, it was on news, Rodney King getting his ass beat. Shit, we was at Southway Manor, man, and we was loped up, man. We was, I'm still towed down. I'm straight out of boot camp, you know what I'm saying, man? We in the streets and we handling our business, man. We got in trouble for real because coming from uh, the Mardi Gras and Freak Neek and stuff, skinheads trying to run us off the fucking freeway before they made the bridge where they had the rails on the side. There was no rails. They was barely building that, that stuff. And, man, like, if you're coming this way and another car on the side of you, coming from the Freak Neek and all that, we had this kind of beer, they had this kind of beer, so everybody was like, hey, you go over, you give them your beer, they give you yours. Well, this red truck had pulled up on the side of us, and they, my homeboy that was driving, he was trying to do that. When that dude rolled the window down, he looked, I was like, what the fuck? He licking his tongue down and shit, he had swastika on his tongue, swastika on the head, swastika on the neck and shit, you know what I'm saying? They licking their tongue down and shit, coming up on it, the fucking nigga, fucking motherfucker. I'm like, what the fuck? We five deep in this little bitty ass car, but that was the wrong time. They learned that God wasn't with him this day. Cause look, let me tell you something. They tried to run us off the freeway rail, and and what was so fucked up? This is why I was like this. I'm answering your question. Um, every car that was in front of us and every car that was in back of us was undercover cops in Galveston. They didn't have no lights at the top. All the lights were inside the front frame of the cars. Look what happened, man. The dude was trying to run off the freeway, man. My homeboy was fighting over the 357 in the back, and back then was shooting dum dums. They don't know what dum dums is, uh, buck shots in the 357. So, man, we fighting over the gun. My boy gets it. He gets on his knees, man. He opens up, man. He see that the window hangs out on him. Boom, 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 boom. All I seen was sparks flying, fire, and motherfucker laying down on the steering wheel like this here. Then all the fucking cars around us start lighting up the lights. Why you wait? You see, they trying to run us off the fucking freeway, man, off the fucking rail. Why did you wait to all this happens? They already following them from the freak me because all the dumb shit they were doing, all the blacks and Mexicans and everybody that was at the fucking, you know, the thing. Wait, wait, so, how, how early do y'all start taking these trips going to like freak nigga and all that? Man, this shit was early, man. It was young, man. I was like 16, 17, man. No oh, shit. All that shit was happening already, man. You know what I'm saying? The Mardi Gras, all this shit. I think, I don't know if it was the freak nigga. I think it was the Mardi Gras. I don't know what it was, it was one of them, yeah. but but if Kappa, one of these that, that you you know what I'm saying, it was the Kappa. So man, look what happens, Donnie. They pull us over. These dudes hitting the freeway rail, they stop on the freeway. I guess one of them didn't make it. But anyway, they handcuff us, all five of us together. I had a big ass afro. I remember I had a big ass afro. Man, they cuff five of us together. Now you got the rail right here. The cop Big ass red neck. He threw us over the motherfucking freeway rail. He threw us over the motherfucking freeway rail. Handcuffed five of us. We rolling. He turned around and started hollering at the other cops. They're running. No, bitch. We ain't running. We rolling. Wow. Look, he turns back again after we stop and they see us down there. One of the, them, them fucking prejudice motherfuckers was in that goddamn truck. One of that made it, didn't have to get an ambulance. The other one that just was out there. Tell me why the cop looking at him, talk shit to us. He turned his back and looking toward traffic. He let this motherfucker grab big ass stones off the ground, stoning the fuck out of us while we was on the ground. Then when they got us up, we had cow, what you call cow ants, carpenter ants. Coming out of our nose, eyes, ears. I had an afro. They was in my motherfucking shit like bird nests. Just, just everywhere. They was crawling all over, eating my neck. They was in my shirt. They were in my fucking drawers. They was everywhere, eating me the fuck up. They, from being handcuffed to everybody screaming and hollering, shut the fuck up. He, hand, you know, took the handcuffs off us being handcuffed fire. 
put the handcuffs behind her. I say, sir, please, sir, can I get the answer on me? Fuck, shut your fucking mouth. So they ate us for hours. They, they took us, they interrogated us in Galveston jail. The ants were calling on my north, sir, sir, I'm wild and being interrogated, sir, can you please help me, sir, please take these ants off me. They kept us in cuffs inside of the cell and through interrogation for hours getting ate by carpenter ants and ants all over us, man. So, um, hey, man, we was getting ready. They were getting ready to ship us off and shit, man. And what had happened was uh, shift chain, all this shit. They were getting ready to ship us off. Uh, while they was processing, getting ready to run us through the thing, that one dude that made it, he was sitting on the other side. They had the cops right here in the middle, and then we was here getting ready to go Harris County. You know what I'm saying? I had blue warrants, every, all this shit. Anyway, they getting ready to ship us off, and that, that, that one dude that made it say, you fucking niggas, all of y'all gonna die. I should have killed you motherfuckers, bitch. You gonna die. Fuck you, nigga. This and that and this and that. It was a female officer inside of there. She was ranked. She said, uncuff them. Let them go home. Hey, motherfucker. They say, cuff that bitch. I see what happened. They cuffed him. They took him in. They dropped the case on us right there. Hmm. I went to jail in Harris County because of Blue Warren. Everybody else was left and, 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 and went home. Okay. So that's why my life, my life like that had changed. And when the Jump Out Boys had hit our house and everything, they didn't find any drugs inside the house. What, what were they, what were they even, were you, were you out, like, were you hot? Like, you had some shit going on? Like, why were they even coming through this? Uh, just families, you know, my mom had a restaurant, you know, family restaurant, my uncles then, we always had our own restaurants. Things were going, going down, but the, 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 the thing is this, man, when they came to our house, they were looking for dope and they didn't find anything. They planted the stuff on 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 us inside the house, and they took all my mom's thirty thousand dollars worth of jewelry, probably fifteen thousand out of out of the crib. They took money from us, so this kind of this like, was building. Yeah, you know, it's like when people talk shit on TV or they talk about the past and all that. That's one thing, and they talk about slavery. That's one thing, but when you start going through stuff, starts happening to you and your house, and to your household, and your family members. My little brother went and did 60 years, you know what I'm saying? He did 17 flat on that 60, and uh, for a, a crime that he didn't even commit. And 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 the person that that was there, on that, that, that committed it, they went to the court and told the judge, hey, I did this and that, and the judge didn't do anything about it because he promised my brother, if you ever come to my court again, I'm gonna give you 60 years, even if it's for stealing bubble gum out of the store. Because see, when a judge tells you some shit like that, they're gonna stick to their word, you know what I'm saying? So everything started building up and I started looking at what was going on in society and with the young minorities, you know, uh, uh, coming up. I started seeing things, you know what I'm saying? I started, I started seeing what was really happening. You know, a lot of people was like, they like to talk about shit, but if you really look at it, the reason why they was fucking with us when we were so young, like Pop Pop got out, he got his teeth kicked out in Quail Meadows by, uh, it was a law named Besson Brooks. One of them daughter had got killed by a dude on the streets. D didn't he cut his daughter head off to her or something like that? Something happened to her? But he and the dude had gold teeth, so every time he would catch a brother with gold teeth, he would knock their shit out. He used to wear a key ring with gold teeth on that motherfucker. And Besson Brooks, man, that's the name. This is this is reality. This am I lying to? Wow. Okay, see, damn. And see, when I started seeing stuff like this, and then you start looking, you say, well, everybody always talking that shit. They go to jail, everybody innocent. That's all you hear about black people in jail. They innocent. They ain't did shit wrong. And you know, some you be some motherfuckers in there that really ain't did nothing. But it be some that did something. They talking that shit. But man, look, man, look here, man. Why, ask yourself, why would the cops even fuck with young minorities like that, giving them cases like that? Well, look today. I'm 48. If you got me while I was young, right now, I can't go anywhere and get a badass job like I want to. Number one, shit, it's hard to go to McDonald's with a felony now. Okay, number two, I can't buy a weapon to protect my family. Number three, I can't ride around like a lot of motherfuckers with the license to carry a weapon. Shit, it's motherfuckers that got license 
to carry a weapon that's getting shot by police in front of their motherfucking kids and shit. Just pop the shit out of you. If you say you got a gun in the car, shoot you, you dead. What the fuck? Killing females now, whooping their ass, hanging them in jails and shit. That shit was happening in Harris County. Everybody act like that's something new. Man, they had the 10th floor in the county, dude. The gladiator floor. Man, they get motherfuckers, man. They had it. They call it the elevator ride. They put you in the elevator, man. Beat your ass from the top floor to the bottom. And when and the dude, they didn't even make it back up to the floor. He did. They was killing motherfuckers right there in Harris County. Motherfuckers getting hung in Pasadena jail. All this shit going on. Then you got that red born in Pasadena. You know where all this Ku Klux Klan shit started with. They got the born yard. Then you look, there's two police cars at the fucking meeting. At the meetings. Come on, man. Yeah, that's what happened to me, Danny. Yeah. So when you so when you come out, so you what year do you come out of boot camp now? I don't even fucking remember, man. But when you come out though, the screw thing is like this a movement now. Yeah, it's it's a movement. It's always been. I was just in and out of jail. That's why when you listen to screwing them tapes, L D, my brother, man, you know what I'm saying? Free L D on lock, free L D, man. I just kept going in and out. I didn't want to abide by no Rules and regulations. On well, I mean, what was you getting? What was you getting into? Just hustling, or just, was just, just hustling. I wasn't getting in trouble for hustling again. It was just like one the probation. I was getting on my motherfucking nerves, man. Talking shit to me because he was he wanted me to fuck up. Talking shit to me, you know what I'm saying? Telling me about, about my fees. They they just talking shit. Community service, picking up trash on the side. Talking, man. I got tired of this shit, man. Then I started getting into the country shit and reading and, and, and seeing shit. I felt like a fucking slave. I'm like, man, fuck you. And the probation, I say, you ain't coming back, are you? I say, fuck no, I ain't coming back. Fuck mm. you. Went home, smoked me some weed, and didn't go back. Shit, man. Mm. And kept on hustling. You know what I'm saying? But you know. Do you okay? Tell me this: How early does because we are, I've heard where they talk about you know screw you know started out like drinking beer and shit like that. How early does the syrup thing? Come uh, like? back in Quail Meadow days, it was only Thunderbird with Kool Aid. Hmm. Uh, oh, y'all was putting the Kool Aid in there. Thunderbird nasty in the motherfucker. Man, that shit was good. With that Kool Aid. That Kool Aid in there. Man, yeah. they put that Kool Aid in that motherfucker. Turn the word. What they used to call it? Chicken and rice, Toby. And then he had the 40 ounces, 40 ounce old English shit. I should have mic'd up Toby, man. He looked like. <laughs> yeah, it was the Blue Bulls because I got a picture for you. Screw Story, he loved them fucking Blue Bulls. Slits my liquor. Yeah, they used to put them beers in the fucking refrig- freezer. Like the St. Isles, St. Isles came out, let it freeze up and shit. Screw like, man, look at this shit. I was like, damn, fuck. He got me on the beer and shit. I was, look, man, I drank my first liquor with Screw, man. I, I fucking went to sleep, man. <laughs> Passed out and woke up screaming and shit because I thought I was blind. What had happened was I threw up in my fucking sleep because I passed out and the fucking vomit. It it, it was in my face and it covered my eyes and shit like a big ass patty and shit. I'm screaming, I can't see, I'm blind. Screw said, You ain't blind, nigga. Took me me in front of the mirror. I had a dried up vomit and shit on me. Oh, man. So, you know, it was in Quail Meadow drinking a beer and all that. I didn't see nothing about no serve until he was in the house school. uh, Toby, what what what's the name of the, the street right there when he was by Southway? Um, Rockstone, Rockstone. Uh, it's the it's the neighborhood right there by 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 telephone. But the actual house though, the house house. Greenstone. Yeah, Greenstone. Greenstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I went over there one day and screwed up, poured up the server. Like, man, what the fuck is this, man? What the fuck is this? Screw, man, this is a shit, man. This cold syrup. I say, cold syrup? Nigga, I want that motherfucking shit, man. Fuck some motherfucking cold syrup. I want that shit. Nigga, pulled my first cup up, man. Like, man I walked from the out. house to, to, <laughs> to fucking uh, 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 Sideway, and I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sideways trying to make it home and shit. I'm like, man, what the fuck? And I ain't never liked that shit. But then, man, I started trying it with that A&W cream, man. Fell in love, That man. was your mix right there. God damn, man. That shit was so good with that crushed ice, man. I, and I started sipping and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's where that's where it all really just, I seen it start at, but, but, right there. Yeah, but your album had already came out. You had yeah, album yeah, I had, I, had my, I had did my album. Screw produced uh, the real home of the free. Screw produced that whole thing. And why I say real home of the free is because I had... Follow me into the ghetto that never came out. Nigga Numb never came. I had a song called Nigga Numb. It never came out. Uh, 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 Broke Hole, that never came out. Screw produced the whole album. Screw produced all my songs in Quail Meadow. Screw produced everything that I did. Screw produced uh, Triple Threat. Screw Mm. produced 
uh, Kiki Pimper, uh, uh, draped up and dripped out. He did that. He did One Life to Live. He did all that shit. He did Lost in the Hood? Yeah. Screw did Lost in the Hood. Kicking the bookshot shells. So I'm going to come in. Come yeah, on, Screw man. did that. Yeah, Screw did that. Screw did all that. Screw was the my DJ. He was my producer. Screw the one who put me with Jam down. Okay, so how and did... Okay. He... he, 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 he he wanted to stick to the DJ and stuff like that. And Patrick then was, was real about taking me to the studio and putting my album out and stuff like that. So Screw said, Al, I want to see you make it. So he uh, he wanted me to do that with them. So 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 they did And you it. were the first artist on Jam Down. Yeah. yeah. They built Jam Down around me. It was no Jam Down. Uh, they had me. Uh, Patrick and them were just some street dudes, you know, doing, doing some shit. And we was on some street level shit, hustling. And uh, shit, he... He put me in the studio, and then all of a sudden, shit, he started buying equipment and shit, and we got the studio right there uh, by, 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 by telephone and, and shit in the warehouses back there. They built the studio around me. Everything. Man. So and um, I remember the first time I had, I had really did Home of the Free again, all over, all that stuff, and screw, you know, he, like I said, he did Welcome to the Jungle. He did all that shit, Lost in the Hood. He, you know, he was doing, he was doing that, that, that stuff. And uh, oh, Lost in the Hood by Ronald, Ronald Ronald Chandler. He he did it did it over. He did that, and um, man, it, Screw came to the studio, man. And that, like I said, I only seen him cry two times in his life. And Patrick then was outside, and Vincent Perry and all them. And they say, Screw, I said, I want to talk to you. I came out there, Screw right there. He was just looking at me. He had a look on his face. I said, well, he said, man, I'm proud of you. My album head came out. He started crying, tears started falling down his eyes. And he hugged me. And he said, man, I'm so proud of you, man. I said, man, what's wrong? School, what's wrong? He said, man, I'm so proud of you, man. And they go crying, like boo-hooing, man. Yeah. He was just happy that I made it. And then that's when I got the letters from Africa. I went on tour with 8-Ball and MJG, me and Ronnie Spencer, because Ronnie's singing on that, riding on foes, pimping hoes. That was the first song Ronnie ever sung on. I'm the one who put Ronnie on his first song. Hmm. Man, OK. so. And this is what I'm just learning is that like Ronnie and Ronnie Spencer and like Screws like real friends and shit. Like, yes, real big close. big friends. Shit, as a matter of fact, I got Screws turntables right now. The the silver and joints. I got Screws real tech tech twelve hundreds. I got all Screws equipment that he was using. On whenever you seen Screw DJing on these documentaries, you know, I got everything because of somebody was trying to keep his equipment and meet Angeli and Ronnie when he kicked the door in and took everything. Hmm. Oh, somebody had somebody had it and was just trying to hold it? Just trying to hold it on, hold on to it, and not give his stuff back. And me, Anjali, and Ronnie Spencer, and, and Screw Cat, we went and kicked the door in, and we took everything. And I got it right now. Still to this day? Right now. I got everything. Hmm. And I'm going to put that inside my shop. It's going to be like the Ark of the Covenant and shit, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you got to pay to come in there and see that. You can't just come take pictures with that. You right, can't go to right, the Lost right. Ark in the company and take pictures with that shit. Yeah. This is, this is, this is. Now, I ain't going to lie, because I was going to ask you, I was like, man, I want to. Oh, you can come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, can yeah. But, but, uh, <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, now, nah, this, this is a national treasure, man. This is, this is. Yeah, they yeah, wanted yeah, to buy it. Yeah. They wanted to buy it. They wanted to put it in the museum. They offered a million and everything. No, no, they sir. They offered a million for no, the same time? Yeah, no, sir. Nothing. I don't want nothing. Nothing. I don't want. You can't put a price on that. No, you cannot put a price on that. No, sir. No, sir. And they got some of my first lyrics I wrote in the museum right now and screw stuff in the museum right yeah. now. Yeah. They put my tapes in the museum and everything, man. So, you know, that's part of history. You know what I'm saying? Don't live Donnie. forever, man. It's for it's it's for it's forever, Donnie. And um yeah, man, you know, everything started right there. You know, Screw started making them beats and stuff and he was he just started going hard, man. You know, it went from four CDs a week to it was a line, man, from his house all the way to the fucking highway. Yeah. And the cops, they started bomb rushing the house then. Gang task force had came. And, um, you know, they tried to show on that little documented little movie that they said they were going to put out. It was on eight. They only got 18 minutes of footage anyway. But anyway, man, uh, um, I wait, was wait, 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 huh? Back up. You said it did. <laughs> Huh. Did we talking about the, the, the you say the yeah footage, everybody right? going crazy thinking yeah. it's gonna be a movie and all this shit. So it's not a movie. Eighteen minutes of footage, man. Eighteen minutes of footage, man. They try to get me on it and all that, hey, man. You know, hey, hey, you know, I ain't got nothing bad to say about nobody. You know what I'm saying? 
I ain't got nothing bad to say about nobody. I'm, did did I'm you get watching. to tell any of your story into it as far no. as your experience? No, sir, because I'm not saying tell, I'm not telling my story on nobody's shit no more. Ain't nobody making no money off of me. I don't give a damn. I'm not giving no input, no output, no nothing. You ain't getting nothing out of LD. Write me a motherfucking check. But when you even think about my name, write me a check before you come see me, man. Write me a check. You want some kind of information? Write me a check. I get paid to talk. Write me a check. No, you're not gonna use me. You're not nothing. Nothing. I'm done with that shit. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? They wanna, they want, they 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 wanna keep me out of shit. You know what I'm saying? Do shit without me, and then when some shit goes down, you wanna come get me because the public and the streets are saying, "Hey, nigga, if you ain't got LD in this shit, we don't wanna hear that shit." And all these other rappers talking that motherfucking shit. Stop talking that shit, boy. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say no name. I'ma just let the streets whoop their motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? Because man, for first of all, first of all. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know what I'm saying? They got 18 minutes of footage. Good luck to whatever they doing, man. Hey, man, God bless you, man. Whatever you're trying to do. But LD got a documentary and a real movie coming out. Yeah. And I'm saving all mine for my own. So, wait, wait, wait. So, there's no LD character in this movie or nothing? No, sir. Hmm. First of all, Whenever you want a true story on something, what you got to do, Toby? You got to go to the beginning, right? You got to go to the root, right? You don't start in the middle. You don't start uh, with screwed up click. You don't start with no none of these rappers. You start at the roots. If you ain't starting at Sterling High and Quail Meadows, you out of line anyway. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how no, nobody feels, to be honest with you. Because like I said, if you wasn't around in the beginning and you wasn't around in the middle and around in the end, hey, man, you don't even count to me. Y'all, all these cats, you know, they went different ways and all this shit, you know what I'm saying? Don't wait to screw die to try to come and you want to be a part of something. You wasn't doing that shit while he was here, so sit your motherfucking ass down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the one to play with. I don't play with these rappers, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go there with them, man. I'm not. I'm not. Leave me the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? Because there's going to be some problems. And, man, so far as um, Zero, I want to say one more thing about him. When I had got out of jail, and it ain't just because of this. You know, in prison and everything, I got out of jail, man. The only person called me, man, was, was Zero. And he came to my mom's house and shit, man. He ate with me. My mom, like... You the one that be on the radio and they keep talking about it. And he's like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. He eating that gumbo, whatever we was eating that day. He eating at the table. Bro said, come on, jump in with me out. I jump in with him. He got him a car. Now I'm looking like, damn. He take me to the mall. He said, Al, get what you want. I said, what, what can I get? He said, you heard what I said. Get what the fuck you want. I said, well, what is that? He said, whatever the fuck you want, nigga. Pull out this shit. It's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> he like this here. He said, I said, get what you want. I got me a couple, couple pair of pants and a shirt because I ain't like that. I got me a pair of those candy Adidas and shit. Went to his house. We stayed up having fun. I'm looking. He got his first house. I, I'm looking around. There's so many clothes and nice stuff in here now. And he got nice car and this and that. And he's happy. He ain't sad no more. I'm like, man, oh, my God. It was just a good vibe. And when he did take me back home, man, I got out the car. He said, man, I love you, man. I said, I love you too, bro. So I got out and I was walking to my mother. He said, hey, you forgot something? I said, what? I got my clothes and shit. He said, come here, man. I went to the car, man. He threw a fucking envelope at me, man. Not not the white envelope, the yellow, you know, the, the big yellow. Hmm. Vanilla envelope, yeah, yeah. Tat motherfucker was racked up, racks on racks on racks. Hmm. I didn't expect it because I didn't open it up till I got in the door. And when I called him back, he said, yeah, nigga, you deserve that. I love you, Al, man. Thank you for everything. Because like you asked me the last time, Zero mentioned about me taking him. Yeah, he talked about that, yeah. yeah. We're going we to we get to that. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We can leave yeah, that alone yeah, right now.